Good morning, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you for joining this session. I hope that you can have some takeaways from this session. Uh, my name is Armin, actually from Austria, from Europe. I moved to Singapore 11 months ago um, to support the team of Lumes here in A. I've been working at Lumes for 10 years. And I'm now for, let's say, more than one decade in the HR and talent management industry. Uh, I was in different positions as I started at Lumes. I was consultant for uh, many years and implemented uh, many projects around the globe, in Europe and in Asia, and of course in the Middle East. Um, then I changed my position. I was the product manager of the products that we have at Lumes and then changed the position and went actually to your uh, management position. So that's a short introduction about myself. Please let me introduce Lumes very quickly as well. Uh, we have more than 2,400 customers, multinational large enterprises, medium and small enterprises around the globe. Uh, we exist at the market for more than 30 years, one of the pioneers here in the talent management industry. Uh, we have 600 employees worldwide, and we are acting in 70 countries. Our solutions, we offer them in 60 different languages. As mentioned earlier, we are um, operating in uh, 70 different countries in all continents. Uh, we have hosting operations here in Asia as well, in Singapore, in Amazon Data Center. We have technical support and client support in many countries here in APEC as well. The definition of talent, let me start with uh, the most important thing, you know, and that's you know, what we are today here. I'm sure about that, that you, ladies and gentlemen, you have all a great definition for talent. A talent could be someone who is a high performer, a highly qualified person, it could be someone who is um, very experienced, loyal to your organization, to your company, is highly qualified. But we can put all these together and we can say that the talent is someone who is fully engaged, fully engaged with your company, with your organization, identifies himself or herself with your products, with your solutions that you have. The talent is a person who is self-motivated. You don't have to motivate these persons to do the job. They do a job actually very good. The talent is a person who wants to grow. So these persons, they know check exactly where I want to be in three years. If you ask them where do you see yourself in five years, they have an answer for you. They have an answer for you during the interviews. They have an answer for you if you talk to them. They have a plan. They have a career path. You don't have you know, to force them to be promoted or to do different jobs. I would like to discuss with you today different, different challenges that we have at the moment at the market, at the labor market. The first challenge is the complexity issue. The second challenge is the global workforce crisis. And the second challenge is lack of talent. So please let me start with the first point, and this is the complexity issue. As I mentioned earlier, I worked uh, with different uh, companies, organizations worldwide. I implemented projects, talent management strategies and concepts for different large enterprises. One thing that I always identified at the beginning of the projects was that the processes and the structure that these companies had they were extremely complicated. And it was always very difficult for us to implement the proper talent management strategy on top of all these complicated processes that they had. Because we had to consider a lot of requirements. And all these requirements are linked with the existing requirements that they had. Many requirements meant, at the same time for us, required many resources. Resources means costs. But the question is, who will pay for that? Your shareholders? Definitely not. The customers? They will not pay for that as well. So who will not pay for that at the end of the day? Your employees. The employees of these organizations. And that's exactly what we discussed with them. 
how to make the processes easier. Right? And it was very difficult at all these companies to define clear KPIs, smart KPIs for the employees, for their high potentials. Although all these high potentials, they were really excited, hardworking, ambitious. They were not very successful at the end of the day, and they could not achieve the targets. What was the result? What was the result at many organizations? The result is that these high potentials, they will leave the company, because they are not successful in that, what they are doing. The next challenge, what we have, is the global workforce challenge and rise of Generation Y. I heard about weaving and that we had already today another session about Generation Y, Generation Z, and all this. I will make it very short. What we see here on the right side, we see today's workforce breakdown. At the moment, and according to this study that we have, 39% of the workforce, global workforce, consists of baby boomers generation. And only 24% generation Y. On the left side, you see a big change. In two years, ladies and gentlemen, in two years, 50% of the global workforce consists of generation Y. And that's really a serious issue that we have. So let's have a look, a deep look at that. What's a baby boomer's generation? These are persons who were born between 1946 and 1964. They have a lot of experiences, and they normally are in the leadership positions. Many of them have been already retired or they are getting retired in the next couple of years. Then we have the Generation Y, the millennials. They were born between 1980 and 2000. They have a different expectation from the work environment and from their managers, and they're shaped by technology. So we see here a big difference here between the Generation Y, the millennials, and the baby boomers generation. What does Generation Y want? Opportunity to grow. They want to know if I start in this organization, if I start in this new job, what opportunities do I have in the next couple of years? What's my career path at this company? Do you have the chance to grow? Do you have the chance to develop myself? What opportunities do I have in this company? What opportunities do you offer to your employees, to this generation? Being recognized. Being recognized every day. Saying thank you to these people every day for the good job that they do. Not every month, not at the end of the quarter, and the end of the year, if we talk about the performance evaluation, or if we just talk about, let's say, the performance that we did in the last six months, but every day, they will be recognized. Agile working environment and network, they're looking for a platform to collaborate. It could be an online platform, it could be a platform that you offer to them within your organization, that's fine, but they're looking for that. Flexible working hours and flexible workplace. We at Lumes, for example, we offer our employees, many of them are from the generation Y, flexible working hours. It's not necessary to work from 9 to 6 or 9 to 5. That's history, that's the past. Now, many of our employees, they work from the workshop, from the coffee shop if they want. That's fine. If they want to work at home, that's fine as well. We offer them one day, two days, sometimes three days, home office. Why not? At the end of the day, the results count. They look between the manager and between the employees. They want to give feedback to the manager. 
That was definitely not acceptable, especially here in APEC 20 years ago. Everything has been changed. Now, the generation Y, 50% of the global workforce in two years, they will give your managers feedback. Having an open platform to share knowledge, information, their thoughts, not only with the colleagues, but with the senior management as well. This doesn't mean that the senior management has to sit together with these people and talk about their strategy, but you need a platform that the senior management share all the information and strategy of the company with these people that are informed. Transparency. State of the art technology, innovation. That's something that they're looking for that. That's so important and we'll see that on one of the slides, how important the use of interface design, you cannot believe that, is important for Generation Y to use your HR system that you have in your organization. Having an e-learning platform. They want to watch a video, they want to watch a training, whenever they want, wherever they are. In a coffee shop, at home, if they're on vacation, they don't want to stay here necessarily in the office, in the classroom training, and have a training. We had a study, and we asked Generation Y for their feedback. We asked Generation Y from different companies, different organizations, in different countries, and from different cultures. We asked them, what do you think about the HR system, HR platform that you have, that you have at the moment? And they have different solutions. Interestingly, the first feedback was, I'm not so happy with the user interface design of the solution of the HR and talent management solution that we have. Our HR system is outdated. The second feedback that they had was, our HR technology is not for me, it doesn't support me. Our HR system is for the HR people. It is so process-oriented, and it's not employee-oriented. I am not in the center, I am not important. They just want, let's say, you have the processes, compensation review, performance management, whatever it is, to give the senior management the results. But I'm not important. And then, the last one was, why do I have to spend so much time to support HR to collect the data? As imagine now, Generation Y, they are always, they are every day in Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and so on. They enter the data without forcing them every day into the system. Sensitive data about their education, about their backgrounds, the photos that they need. Every day, you just go there and upload it. They spend two hours maybe a day just for that. But if you ask them to enter the data in the HR system, they don't want to do that. Spend one hour, two hours, they don't want to do that. They just ignore it. Why? Because the systems that they have, the platforms that they have, is not employee oriented. Lack of talent is the next challenge that I would like to discuss. Industry 4.0, that hot topic. I think you know at this event we discuss this as well in another session, and that's one of the hot topics I would say at many HR conferences. What is it? It's actually not very easy. It's about cognitive computing. It's about robotics. It's about cloud computing. It's about Internet of Things. But for that. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to define new skills and competencies in your companies. Two examples. Adidas, they started to replace, we know that because you know, we're working with them very closely, they started to replace some of the companies, some of the factories that they have here in Apple. One of the factories was in Vietnam. They replaced a lot of employees, a lot of workers, just like that. And moved everything to Germany and used robots instead of workers. The biggest challenge that they had at the beginning was that the people who should manage, who should maintain the robots, they didn't have the right skills and competencies. Finding the right people to do that, it was not so easy as well. Second example, Foxconn. 
Foxconn is the biggest provider for Apple. They replaced last year 60,000 workers and replaced them by robots. And this was very challenging for them as well. Finding the right people to maintain and manage the robots. And what they didn't do in the last years, they didn't manage, they didn't develop these skills and competencies internally to, to implement this strategy. Big gap between labor supply and labor demand is getting bigger and bigger. For that, I would like to go to the next point. Many European companies, and there are studies for that, I don't want to put all these studies here on the slides. Many European companies like Germany, or countries here in Asia, like South Korea, they need talents in order to continue to grow. The problem, they don't have enough talents, there are not enough talents available to continue to grow. So what to do? Looking for the talents somewhere else, maybe here in Hong Kong, maybe in China, maybe in Singapore. They offer, we know that because you know we have them as a customer. They offer fantastic compensation packages to the talents to high potentials here in APEC as well. Bring them, move them from here to South Korea, to Germany, to France, and so on. The war of talent has already started, ladies and gentlemen, and we have to recognize that. After working with 2,400 organizations worldwide, we have a different point of view about talent management. That's a study from Forbes, Burson, and Deloitte. Today's company process-oriented strategies no longer work. One third of employees considering leaving their job in the next couple of months. Maybe in your organization, ladies and gentlemen. 60% of the employers cannot attract the right candidate. 60%, and that's a lot. 60% of the employees they continue to leave the job in the next three years. The most common reason why people leave their job, many of us think, and that's a study that we have now from LinkedIn, many of us think that that's the compensation, that's the salary. That's not true. This is not the most important reason for that. It is career path. It is the opportunity that you offer to the generation Y, to the people that you have in your organization. I was concerned about the lack of opportunities for advancement. Hiring managers look at external talent too soon and too often. Big problem, big issue. We see that every day. We see that at all organizations. Following scenario, you have a key position at your organization. Let's say a senior sales manager. The senior sales manager will leave the company for whatever reason. What to do? What normally a manager internally, the hiring manager duty is contact the job. We have a new vacant position. So they go to the job board, they go to the headhunter. If this is a key position, it's worth to get uh, discussions with the headhunter. Spend money, easily 20,000 USD to find the right person. This takes time, weeks or months. But once you have the right person, there is no guarantee that this person will stay with your company, first. Second, for this new person, for this right candidate, you need weeks or months to train and enable this person. During this time, this person is definitely not productive. After these three or six months, this person, as a sales person, we know that, they're not able to sell because they're not productive enough for the next three or six months. So, six months or maybe one year, you have a senior sales manager in your company who is not productive and cannot sell. How much does it cost? A lot. So, 
And this is the return on investment that we have. If you have a proper talent management strategy in your company, do not look always at the right candidates externally. Maybe you have that in your organization already. But important is that you can identify them and you can support them to grow so that we have the right candidates for the right positions if it is necessary. This is the analyst view from Berzin. On the right side, you see here the talent, traditional talent management that has been introduced to the HR world 30 years ago. On the left side, we see the new talent management strategy introduced to the HR a few years ago. It is not process-oriented, it is not company-driven, it is people-oriented. People and talents, they are in the center. It is about focus on culture, it is about focus on environment, and it is about leadership and empowering the people that you have. Because of all these challenges, because of all this new strategy that has been introduced to the HR world, we started as a mess a few years ago. Also, we exist for 30 years. Also, we have here a fantastic solution, I can tell you that. So we have 2,400 customers worldwide. We started with a completely new solution three years ago, which is people-oriented. It is not process-oriented. The name of the solution is ETWeb Empower. ETWeb stands for Execute Track Web. That's the online solution. Why ETWeb Empower? Four reasons. One reason is one platform. We listen to the HR, we listen to the people that use the system, and what they want always, and what they told us always was, we want to have a suite. We want to have one platform where we have everything in one system, one solution from one source. We want to have a talent management system, learning management system, recruiting system, and onboarding everything in one system. First. Second, cutting edge technology. It was very important for the people that they have a state-of-the-art technology. It was very important for them that they have a release safe technology. What does it mean? You probably work with the different software vendors. If you want to upgrade your solution to a new version, how much time do you need for that? You invested probably months, weeks, or years to migrate the solution that you have to a new version. And that's something that we wanted to avoid. Our solution has two layers. One layer is the customer layer, the second one is Lumes layer. We have three releases every year, and all releases upgrade only the Lumes layer. Everything that you configure, everything that you adjust, will be kept that it is only in the customer layer. Third, state of the art technology for the generation Y. We heard about that. We had all these studies. They want to have something which is mobile, compatible. They want to have something which is modern to use. We want to attract them. We want to give them some fun using the system. Different to the process-oriented systems that we know. And the last reason for that was having a system which is fully configurable and you can implement it very fast. Edible and power consists of different bundles, this is how we call them, or different features, functionalities. We have perform bundle to manage the performance plans. We have reward and grow to manage the skills and competencies, career and succession planning, and the compensation. We have the learn bundle as an e-learn platform where you have the opportunity to give the generation Y a platform to use the internet, and we have onboarding and the recruit. We have different reporting options. We have a dashboard that you can use if you want to analyze the data and discuss this with your management team. You can create your own PDF report. You can create your quick report. These are Excel files that you can create when you want, very quickly, in a few minutes. 
and you have a business intelligence platform to have the statistics, statistics in your company if you want to share the information with the senior management, for example. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just a short demonstration of a major work that we did in the last couple of years. The solution is very comprehensive and you can cover all the talent strategy solutions that you would need and you would have state-of-the-art technology for the generation Y so that we can fight this fight. And the fight is the war of talent has already started. Thank you very much for your attention.